The Shroud of Turin is a highly controversial artifact. Is it the burial cloth of Jesus Christ, or is it something that somebody made in the Middle Ages? I'm Dr. Robert Carter. I'm sitting in the studio today with my dear friend, Dr. Matthew Tsurhati, and we are discussing a highly controversial thing called the Shroud of Turin. Okay, so greetings, everybody. Thank you for uh, letting me be on the show. And so let's talk about the Shroud of Turin. Uh, okay. The Shroud of Turin is a, a single piece of cloth which is housed in the uh, St. John's Cathedral in uh, the city of Turin. And it's about 14 by 4 feet long. What's 14 interesting, feet long, so about twice as long as a tall person. As a okay. tall person, okay. exactly. And of course, it has a, a back and a front image of uh, a man who has obviously been tortured and beaten. And this okay. is a very important uh, relic of the Roman Catholic Church. Many people believe that this is the actual burial cloth of Jesus Christ coming from the first century. Wow, that would be amazing if it was. I mean, I think it's 2,000 years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there's controversy. Yes, because um, first of all, we have to look at uh, the biblical evidence and the scientific evidence. Okay, biblical evidence, scientific evidence. But what does the Bible have to say about what how Jesus was buried? There's not much detail there, is there? Well, there, there are several verses interspersed in the four Gospels. Okay. And I think there is enough information to show uh, based on which we can, which we can decide whether the shout is really authentic, uh, I can list three verses from the Gospel of John. Uh, John eleven forty four describes the burial cloth of Lazarus, who was in the grave for four days. Okay, so a contemporary burial close to Jerusalem, and how is that described? Exactly. So this is a, uh, a good description of burial practices in uh, the first century. Okay. Uh, it describes that Lazarus was uh, dead for four days. Okay. So he was really truly dead. That's and when a good Jesus point. Christ uh, calls him come forth, and we can see that uh, Lazarus is bound in multiple uh, strips of cloth and not, not just one single burial cloth. Excellent. Okay. So custom of the day, wrap the person up and a whole bunch of strips, and he had a, a separate piece of cloth over his face. And he had, he had a separate face. napkin over his face, okay. which is essential. Uh, we also know that they buried people with herbs and spices, right. and like myrrh specifically is really, really, really sticky. And uh, John 19 uh, verse 40 describes how uh, how um, uh, Jesus' relatives and friends, how they uh, put a lot of spices, a very large quantity, uh, into his burial class. And uh, Well, it at least describes them putting the spices bring the spices to the tomb, one assumes that they would have done the process they would, of wrapping them They would them have up. also done it as well. Okay. Uh, another verse, which I think is the most convincing of all, it's John 20, verse 7. It describes how Jesus Christ was buried in, in multiple pieces of cloths. Yes. And that there was the, the facial cloths, which was rolled together and put in, put in a separate place by itself. So this indicates that when at the resurrection, when they saw when they saw these were the cloths, the they, they actually they saw, saw more than one piece of cloth in the tomb. And so this means that the Bible says that there was more than one piece of cloth, okay. but the the shroud of Turin is is, is one single one large single piece, of piece of cloth. Okay, so it's so mathematic mathematics. There's a controversy right there. Exactly. Now, sola scriptura tells us the Bible is our ultimate authority. You like to say that a lot. Yes. If the Bible is our ultimate authority. First pass reading the burial account of Jesus, more than one piece of cloth. So th this first was, contradiction. This this would be a, a direct contradiction to what Scripture says. Uh, if if the cloth is the burial, if the shroud of Turin is a burial cloth, it would contradict. It would contradict the Scripture, and based on based on source Scriptura, we would we would actually have to reject the shroud of Turin as being the authentic burial cloth of Christ. Okay. How about scientifically? Well, scientifically, people raise a whole number of uh, considerations. There's the carbon-14 dating, there's pollen analysis, okay. uh, lignin breakdown. Now, you and, I, you and I have looked at all these. In fact, we wrote an article, it's on creation.com, it's called, Is the Shroud of Turin Authentic? We cannot cover every point that we discussed in this article on this brief podcast. So, listeners, go to creation.com, type in shroud, type in shroud of Turin, our article will pop up, and you can read a lot more details than we're covering right now. And in there, uh, our analysis of the pollen analysis is that the analysis is no good. 
It's the, it's not well, it's, something you can base anything well, it's, on. It's ambiguous. It's I mean, ambiguous. The, the way they use this pawn analysis is that the uh, they took a sticky tape and they looked at what uh, pawn samples there were on the shroud. Yeah, when they pull the tape yeah. off the off the shroud, and they look at it under a microscope. Under a microscope. So they try to match up what species that pawn could have uh, could have come from. Okay. And so they allege that these species only came from the vicinity of Jerusalem. But you really can't get pollen down to a species level usually. No, no uh, that's, that's correct because uh, in pollen, pollen analysis, you can really only tell what, what genus a given uh, speck usually, of yeah. pollen uh, belongs to. Okay. Sometimes even worse than genus, but right. okay. I could also see that uh, some Purochard supporters, for example, Mark Antonacci, he doesn't accept the pollen analysis results. All right, so more controversy and something that's not, it's not- it's You can't not, really tell. Yeah, there's not much substance to it. However, there is one bit of scientific testing that has been done, multiple laboratories, and they all got essentially the same number. So this is a carbon-14 dating? Carbon-14 dating. And so uh, this was done in the 1980s. And the basic result is that uh, all these labs show that uh, the, uh, the date, the age of the shroud comes from a time period about 1260 to 1390, which is from the Middle Ages as opposed to the first century AD. And we've carbon dated a lot of medieval artifacts that we know how old they are, and they show about the same level. It's levels. very consistent. So a, a lot of our, our listeners might have problems with radiometric dating, but carbon dating is a good science. The machines are very accurate, and it works really well, especially over the last 2,000 years. For, for young ages. Yeah, for things yeah. within that span, there's no reason to reject it. But some people say, oh, no, no, no. The carbon dating is wrong because of contamination. Contamination. That's a very common objection by the pure shroud uh, supporters. Okay. And I would have to say that uh, that it's not really a good argument because in order to throw off the date by by so much uh, by more than a thousand years, yeah. the actual researchers uh, who actually uh, dated the carbon fourteen samples, it's, they say nuclear physici physicist. He says that. The, the sample itself would have to be one third contamination. And that, that's a lot. A third. So it looked like one a third really point. dirty piece Very of fabric, dirty. muddy or gummy or yeah. wax or whatever. But, yeah. okay. but, but, this, but this researcher, he actually supplied a picture of the sample yeah. that they dated. And it was very clean looking. It didn't have contamination, much contamination on it. Okay. And plus standard carbon dating, they clean it first. Of course, to of get course. Rid of any in the lab, of course, that things. Would be okay. the natural would be All right, standard so, protocol. Biblically, there are issues. Scientifically, there are major issues. There are also issues. The third question is, what about the history? The history. Do we have a Shroud of Turin, you know, 1,500, 1,700 years ago? Well, the Pure Shroud uh, supporters, they say that uh, there, was, there were four stages uh, from, actually three stages from Jerusalem all the way to Lier, France, where they first put the Shroud on display. Okay. But in there, there are multiple centuries with no historical record. Right. And so, in other words, we don't necessarily know that the thing they talked about in Constantinople is the same thing they talk about today. Today. And, uh, and uh, I would say that uh, the, uh, the most convincing uh, evidence against the authenticity of the Shroud is that uh, the, from the first stage from Jerusalem to uh, Edessa, Turkey, which is the second stage where they held the Shroud, is that uh, there's... Uh, uh, some people allege that uh, King Abgar V of Edessa, Turkey, he describes how he, he received a painting with an image of, of Jesus Christ. But even Roman Catholic authorities accept that this is merely a legend. Okay. So if the first step is, is legendary, then there really is no historical basis for the shouts. So, so whether or not it goes back to Constantinople and the Crusade era is, is an interesting historical question. Yeah. But beyond that, it's all speculation. It's very speculative. And also, I'd, uh, I might also add that that uh, even in Constantinople, the people, uh, the Orthodox believers who housed uh, the Shroud, who, you know, if who, it was a Shroud, yeah. If it was really the Shroud, okay. uh, they, they also didn't even consider it uh, to be a major relic. They didn't uh, give it any, uh, uh, any prominence uh, before any other kind of, of relic. Okay. So, all these issues... And yet there are some people listening who want the shroud to be real. Their faith might be depending upon it, or they might think it's super important. What would we tell that person? I would uh, tell this person that uh, they should definitely not be dismayed because uh, our faith, it isn't based on 
on physical things. We believe not by sight, but by, but by faith. We walk, we walk by faith. Okay. And so I think that going back to Sola Scriptura, that, that the Word of God, the Scripture, is enough for us. That the testimonies from the four uh-huh. Gospels So the testimonies and the Gospels and the letters in the New Testament, what were those people using as evidence the claim to Jesus Christ were true? Well, these people, they, they, uh, they saw the risen Christ. Uh, the Bible says that, that more than 500 people saw Jesus Christ appear to them after his resurrection. So it was a verbal testimony. It was a verbal testimony, the and word of God. That's what people were saying. This is our proof. They didn't have a piece of cloth. They didn't have grave goods. They didn't have any physical anything. It was, I know it's true. I saw it. And enough people confirmed that. That's how right, the New Testament right. came together. Right. Okay. Uh, the resurrection, the empty grave, many people uh, bearing witness to the same thing. So there you have it. Controversial piece of cloth with a very interesting image on it. It's historicity, a little bit suspicious. Scientifically, it really does not look like it's as old as some people claim. And uh, theologically, it's not something we need. In fact, um, it's not something anyone in the New Testament used to demonstrate the claims of Christ. So, in the end, I would love the Shroud of Turin to be true. I just, I can't say it is, because everything's pointing away from it. I don't need it. We don't think you need it. Read our article for more information. Creation.com is a good resource for a lot of issues in the Strata Turin. we got a pretty good article there for you. So if you're challenged by this, just keep thinking. The Bible is the Word of God. That's what we know, and that's what we have to believe. And if this is just a medieval relic, it's not something we should be hanging our faith on. And again, I think that this, uh, this is uh, an issue which is very important for today's modern society. That, that we shouldn't uh, lose sight of, that, that uh, in, uh, in today's culture, the authority of Scripture is under uh, so much attack. Yes, it is. We must always trust the Scripture alone, sola scriptura. And so that's, what, that's, what, uh, that's the reason why some people may seek extra biblical evidence, which is af- actually really not necessary for our faith. True. The Bible is really enough. It's nice when we do find archaeological evidence is, to support the Bible, and there's a lot of it. But there's no magic bullet here. So in the end, we have this controversial thing called the Shroud of Turin. It's a very interesting artifact. It's fascinating. It's got a lot of history to it, a lot of speculation, a lot of argument about it. Uh, But in the end, it's not something that we can 100% trust. So what we're advocating is that we simply set it aside as a, a very interesting piece of history, but not something that demonstrates the resurrection of Jesus, and it's not something that is actually at all important to our faith. Now, if that's scary for you, go read our article. We've, we've put together a very good summary of all the issues, and we think you'd be very much encouraged. So thank you for listening. Fans, we love you all. Have a great time.